Hello and welcome to the channel again cat lovers. In today's video we will talk about pain expression in cats. Like many other animals, cats cannot self-report symptoms of pain or disease to humans. Humans are used to doing that to each other in different ways. We use verbal communication to communicate to each other when we are in pain, or sometimes when that is not possible, we use our facial expression or body posture. Ow, my leg! This is the worst pain ever! Go, go! Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it is not easy for animals to communicate that they are in pain in the same way. First of all, they don't speak our language. Cats make sounds, but we cannot interpret them in detail. Second, the body language of animals is not easy to understand. You don't understand. It is often very subtle, as we will see further on. As humans, we are not used to picking up these subtle signals. For example, cat owners may not always notice when their pet is in pain. However, it is important to be able to do so. Pain is often a sign that something is wrong with the animal's body. This can be a disease, but also things like inflammation or congestion. From some of these conditions, the consequences are not always externally visible. For example, the inflammation of a joint on the leg of the cat we can notice because the cat walks differently. Or you may notice that the cat is less mobile than before. However, in some disorders, there are no external features to be found. The cat will experience pain, but cannot communicate it easily to their caregiver. For a vet, estimating the amount of pain the animal is in is also important. This is how he knows whether or not to give the animal an anesthetic. Administering an anesthetic to an animal is not always desirable because it is taxing on the animal's body. So being able to assess whether or not to do this can be very important. So the question is, how can I tell from my cat that she is in pain if there are no external signs to indicate this? Luckily, there is a way, and I hope this video can learn you what to watch for. Researchers have been working more in recent years to establish a scale for measuring pain in an animal. For example, the mouse grimace scale was developed in 2010. This provides a coding system for changes in a mouse face when it feels a pain stimulant. The mouse grimace scale has already proven itself in practice. It is considered by researchers to be a precise and reliable coding system. The same system has been further developed for rats, rabbits, horses, cats, pigs and sheep. For cats, this research has been done extensively. The method that was finally developed is called the feline grimace scale. There was again a focus on the changes in the face of the cat when feeling pain. To determine whether or not a cat is experiencing pain, its face is compared before and after experiencing pain. For example, a picture was taken of the face before undergoing surgery and afterwards during the healing process. By comparing these two pictures, researchers were able to determine what facial expressions cats express when they feel pain. The differences were too small so the researchers could not always observe them with the naked eye. When a cat feels pain, it's only to indicate it minimally. It was also difficult to estimate the intensity of the pain. Scientists solved this by dividing the cat's face into 48 individual facial landmarks, as you can see here. These points are easier to track across different pictures using computers. The points were divided into two groups. One group of landmarks is focused on muscles on the skin that will move when the muscles contract. The other group of landmarks is not focused on muscles. This second group is focused on the change in the cat's face due contraction of different muscles. These 48 landmarks are mainly focused on 5 areas of the cat's face. These include the position of ears, orbital tightening, muzzle tension, whiskers position and head position. These areas have also been used previously in the same research in rats, rabbits, mice, sheep and horses. Photos are then taken of the cat's face on which these points are indicated. Because these points are easier for a computer to follow, it is possible to notice very small changes in the cat's face. A program will compare the pictures before and after experiencing pain. Thus, it can ultimately be deduced whether a cat is painful or pain-free. The results are very fascinating. First, I show again the first picture, showing the points that the computer program was going to follow. 
Now you see the picture showing the movements in the cat's face when she experiences acute pain. The arrows indicate which changes can be observed. As you can see, there is a more lateral and ventral positioning of the ears, but also a reduced distance between the cheeks, mouth and nose region. Notice also a reduced distance between the cheeks, mouth and the eyes, but an increased distance between the nose and eye. Finally, we see a slightly narrowed eye aperture. The eye aperture is narrowed a very little bit. As we look at these movements, we can say the communication of the cat when she is in pain are very subtle. Researchers think this is due to several reasons. First of all, the cat's ancestors were not social animals. You can see this in this video. They did not live in groups, as for example rats do. Therefore, for cats, it makes little sense to start communicating to your peers you are in pain and in need of care. Help me! Help me! Secondly, researchers think that the changes in the face of the cat go beyond communicating pain. Turning the ears or reducing the size of the eyes may also be to regulate sensory input in a way that supports self-preservation. For example, a reduction in eye aperture and changes in the shape and orientation of the ears and whiskers may moderate pain perception by limiting external sensory input. The cat will, as it were, keep the outside world outside a bit to be able to endure the pain better. Additionally, by making adjustments to the face it may also be that vulnerable areas are protected. The protection then comes from the adjustments that are made. For example, ears that are closer to that cat's head are better protected. An eye that is squeezed shut is also less exposed to danger. This is not illogical reasoning. The animal may feel pain from being attacked by a predator. By keeping the ears closer to the head, the animal can protect itself from additional damage and increase its chances of survival. To summarize, we can see on a cat's face when they are in pain. However, these changes are very subtle. What I remember from the research is that the ears and muzzle in particular are good indicators for owners to see if a cat is experiencing pain. As you can see from this cartoon from the research, the ears move more to the side. Was I to see this in Alba, I would think her expression would be less alert. If her ears fall to the side, she would give me a more absent-minded impression. This to me would be an indication that something is not correct. For the muzzle, as you can see from this cartoon, I would think she gives a more tense impression. The area around the nose and cheeks look tenser. If I saw this, I would again interpret it that something is not correct with her. As you can see, it is not easy for owners to tell if their cat is in pain. Biologically, they are not made to communicate it to us, so it's up to us to learn how to recognize the signs. The best signs to look out for is the ears that are falling to the side and a muzzle that seems more tensed up. Of course, when you see these signs or other abrupt changes in behavior, it is always advisable to go to a vet. Just because cats are not used to communicating when they are in pain, it is better to go to the vet too soon than too slowly. It can really save the life of your cat. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.